Hey everyone, welcome back to my How to Start a Business series. This is part four. If you haven't watched the first three, go do that now. It covers everything leading up until this point. This one is about how to grow your existing business and get more clients and use marketing in order to get more money, more reach and higher quality clients. Because you don't always want to do cheap gigs the rest of your life. Eventually you want to land those big clients that pay you more money, are easy to work with and are higher quality. Maybe at this point you've reached a plateau where you're not able to get more jobs or you're constantly maxed out at 60 hours a week, but you're not really making any more money. So how do you work less, but get paid more? This is the video that teaches you how to do that. And this is the point where you are truly a business owner. First of all, you're working too many hours. The reason why you're doing this is maybe you were really fresh and excited at the beginning and you were taking on as much work as possible, I have done this myself where I panic a little bit and I'm like, am I going to have enough work for the season? Because sometimes clients cancel. Sometimes there's emergencies. Sometimes they call off a project. And so I tend to take on 60 hours of work a week and count on maybe 40 of those working out. And this actually just happened to me recently. The good thing is I had a core client that's my bread and butter and I teach on the side. So I did have stable income and I consider about 25% of my income to just be flexible. Whether it happens or not, it's nice to have, but it's not critical. We need to get you to the point where 50 to 75% of your income is reliable, reoccurring, stable, and the other 25% is more flexible. Maybe it pays more, but you really can't count on that showing up all the time. Now, this is hard to do in the beginning because you kind of have to take whatever you get. But after about six months to a year, you should get to the point where you can take on all these different types of jobs. And at some point you've probably met a client that's like, hey, I love your work and I would like to hire you for at least a solid 20 hours a week, a solid 30 hours a week. Maybe it's even just 10 or 15, but it pays so well that you can at least count on that every single week. The reason why this is so important is you need to have time in your schedule to grow your business. So if you don't have this reoccurring income, if you're constantly job hunting or looking for new gigs, you're not spending that time marketing yourself and improving on the things that you need to get to the next rung. So now the question is, where do I find this reoccurring work? There's a couple ways you can do this. One, approach clients that you've already worked with and ask them what else you can do. Or if you find a client that if you kind of figure out, it sounds like they need a lot of work done, try and pitch to them. For example, if they're doing a single video, let's say it's real estate and they're hiring you, ask if you can batch doing a couple of their houses and cutting all their social media content for it. Offer to do 15, 30, 60 second ads in both one by one, nine by 16 stories and 16 by nine for their website and posts. Ask to do it multiple times and offer that whole set as one big collection. That's probably gonna be, you know, at least one or two months worth of work. And if you do it for a couple of houses, it could be, you know, about half a year's worth of work depending on how many open homes they have. The last thing for reoccurring income is look for those contracts. Use your agencies, your creative agencies, in order to ask them for jobs that aren't just one-offs. Ask them for something that's like a three to six month job. A lot of times those are remote as well, so it's super easy to do. If they need an editor to do six months worth of work, that's six months worth of work that you can count on. And then you could use that time of six months to just say, hey, my expenses are covered. Now I can focus on growing my business to get to the next level. Never underestimate the power of asking an existing client or an agency, what more can I do? Showing that initiative and that eagerness goes a really long way. A big mistake that I see beginner filmmakers make is they pitch this idea to the client, what more can I do for you? And the client says, none. What do you do in this situation? Well, I think at this point, it's almost too late. You had to have shown value leading up to this point for them to get excited. So here's how it works in different scenarios. In real estate, basically what they're looking for is to sell the house. So if you cut social content for them or shot a video and it didn't actually help sell the house, they're not gonna hire you back again. However, if they found that, wow, when we actually shot a video for this house, it sold four times faster than our other homes, suddenly there's an ROI, a return on investment value to them, both for time, money, marketing, and all of that. So if you are able to accomplish that and you shoot something really good, they're gonna see value in it and they're going to want more. They're not just gonna hire you back for no reason. 
In the corporate world, they want to see true monetary ROI. So what you might want to do is track spreadsheets, always get the insights and data and analytics behind anything that you do. So for example, if you shoot a corporate video and that redirects any viewer to say a landing page, you can look at those landing page numbers and see how many people entered the landing page. How long did they stay? Did they click on something? A software I use is Unbounce and I use this every single time just to show that yes, people are engaging with the videos that I create and you can see the total views, how long they watched it for, basically YouTube analytics, but present this to the client in a way that says, hey, because 40,000 people saw this video, we found that 10% of them went to the landing page and actually bought your product. Therefore, this video that cost $3,000 actually equaled about $25,000 in revenue. Therefore, it was a really profitable marketing effort. Let's say you're shooting a short film and you put it into a film festival. An easy way to track ROI on that is, did it win awards? How much did it cost? How much prize money did it earn? And did it get sold to other film festivals to be shown there? You might get paid on the back end for that. And that's what studios want to see. So that covers reoccurring revenue. Now let's talk about hiring help. So let's say at this point, your number one problem is you are getting this reoccurring revenue. You do have tons of jobs lined up and you have your core set of regular income that's coming in and covering all your expenses, but you do want to expand and you have no time because you're working 60 to 80 hours a week. What was the point of starting your own business when you can't enjoy life? At this point, you need to hire help. Help can come in many different forms. You were once in a position where you were looking for work in order to get your foot in the door and you might wanna find people who are in that same position as you. At this point, you can hire somebody just part-time, pay them per hour. I always like to pay, sounds like a lot, but I like to pay around 30 to $35 an hour because I want quality help. And I tend not to just hire any random freelancer online. I try and work with somebody regularly who can come in, I can rely on them, they understand the client, and I tend to just assign one assistant to one client and I try not to have them juggle too many clients because it might be a little confusing to them. They handle the day-to-day -day small tasks, like for example, organizing footage, backing things up, um, helping me with invoicing, things like that, while I handle the major stuff. I'm basically the creative director, the main director, the director of marketing, whatever that company needs me to fill in those shoes for, that's what I'm going to be. And then I'm gonna have all the people under me help me out so that I don't have to work 80 hours a week. I'm working 40, I'm paying them most of the money, and I'm taking a small cut off of the top, usually about 20%, but the rest goes to them, just so that I can maintain, sustain my business, why would I wanna do that? Why would I wanna pay somebody so much of the money in order to just get more work? It kinda doesn't make sense, right? Well, it actually does. So by showing that you can take on more work and handle a team, that's really valuable to a lot of clients, especially like in the corporate world and the film directing world, where they wanna see that you can handle a crew. If you're a solopreneur your whole life and you get put on a film set and you have to direct a whole bunch of people, you might freak out because there's just so much to do you need to show that you have leadership skills. So in this case, it's really great in the past when I've been able to handle up to a team of 30 remotely, especially during lockdown, of editors, assistants, graphic designers, and such, because in the end, it showed that I could handle a team and it increased my leadership skills, time management skills, budget, finance, and it gave me more personal time to work with the client on the important things like strategy and long-term value, rather than doing the nitty gritty stuff like labeling footage, creating small social media 15 second clips, all the other things that are kind of fun at the beginning, but I would rather be in a position where I'm directing, doing the main cinematography, and doing the key editing, and letting my assistants handle the rest. This is gonna push you to become a better artist, and it's going to accelerate your growth as a videographer and filmmaker much faster than if you were doing things on your own. Next, let's talk about salary versus contract. You might get to the point where a client loves you so much that they would like you to be full-time on board, and you're gonna have to make the decision on if this is right for you or not. So let's go over the pros and cons. The pros to having a salary is you get a lot of income, less taxes, and you get consistent work. It's really great to be able to work in-house because you usually have access to all of their gear, equipment, benefits, and a team that's ready to go so that I could just focus on doing what I do best, which is making films and being creative. The downside, which I did not experience at that job, but at my other previous job, was that 
in time, you tend to do the same thing over and over. I originally started off doing videography and filmmaking as their creative director, and I was filming on helicopters, having so much fun, but in time, I did get promoted up the ladder. I became the director of marketing, and this is where things, even though I was getting paid more, were not quite as fulfilling for me. And because I was pretty much the only employee in the marketing department alongside an intern for quite a while, it came on me to do all the graphic design, writing, marketing, website, all of that work. Things that I can do, but you know, at the end of the day, I am a filmmaker and I just really wanted to get on that helicopter to film something. So what I found is in time, when you work salary in a single position and you do the same thing over and over again, you kind of get stunted in your growth as a filmmaker because you're really not pushed to try and do new things. The other thing to keep in mind is don't think that you're not going to work 60 hours a week if you become salary. A lot of times I found that I work more hours when I'm working on salary versus contract. Contract, people wanna be very careful to use your time wisely because you were charging them by the hour. And what I find is I'm able to get most of my work done within 20 to 30 hours a week for a big company. Whereas when I work corporate and working those salary jobs, a lot of times I'm working 60 hours a week just because they have me come into the office and there's a lot of things I can't do like filming and editing. So what you end up doing is a lot of work at home because it's the only time that you can focus when you're not in meetings. So you kind of get the same amount of work done, but in 60 hours instead of 30 hours, it's very strange, but you're not getting paid for those extra 20 hours over the 40. So you gotta pick your battles. And let's talk about the last category, which is marketing. If you wanna to stick to your own routine and not work salary, then you gotta grow on your own and you have to do that through marketing. It's really important for anybody in any business any field, including filmmaking, to have a good understanding of marketing. This is actually why I think a lot of people become starving artists is because they are very, very qualified. They're so skilled and they have no idea how to get the rest of the world to know that they exist and to buy their work. So marketing comes into play. It is so critical to learn this. I would recommend that you take a course on this. There's plenty of free ones out there and I'm sure you can just go on YouTube and find something that way, but just get at least some basic understanding of marketing. What do people want? How do you communicate with them? How do you present your brand to the world? How do you find clients and close those sales, which is a part of marketing? How do you create landing pages, advertisements through Facebook and Google in order to advertise to your local community and abroad in order to get more work on Fiverr, Upwork, any of those platforms that you use, how do you find those people who are willing to pay for what you need? And the answer is you find the people who need it. If you're trying to pitch to somebody who doesn't actually need your services, they're not gonna buy and you're gonna be putting in so much work for little reward. So marketing and advertising allows you to find those people who have a pain point, just like I'm sure you clicked on this video because you too have a pain point. So when you're doing marketing, don't just blast out there, I'm a videographer, hire me try and solve a particular pain point. It could be restaurants who are looking for videographers in order to help them increase their social media presence. Maybe you specialize in that. Just creating high impact social media clips for a company, for their website, their platforms, their TikTok, their local ads. Maybe you advertise that you're an editor who specializes in documentary work. So you wouldn't want to advertise to BMW who's shooting a commercial, you might want to specifically go after documentary filmmakers who are, you know, five to 10 minutes long and you can have a flat rate for that. So if you haven't picked up on it by now, the key is to niche down, specialize. That's how you grow your business. In the beginning, you're going to try and do as much as possible just to get your feelers out there, just kind of see what works and just see, do I like this? Do I hate this? How many hours do I like to work? What locations do I enjoy? Do I like working with other people and collaborating or going solo? Once you figure that out within about six to 12 months, now it's time to niche down and focus. Don't forget to leverage your unfair advantage when you do that marketing. At the end of this, combining marketing, specializing, niching down, growing your team, and reaching more clients, you should be able to combine this all and keep leveling up the work that you do. You will grow pretty fast. It's actually pretty crazy how quickly you grow. You'll grow from like being, you know, an assistant to doing free work, to landing your first job, second, third, and then it just kind of shoots up from there. It's actually pretty crazy how big that leap is, but you have to get through those first six months. If you don't get through those first six months, 
That's where a lot of people quit and they just never make it. They give up, they don't try, and that's like the make or break point. So if you can get through those first six months, you will land that big client and that will completely change how you're going to book your other clients in the future. You just need that one big solid portfolio piece. And once you have that, you'll network very quickly and you'll be able to grow at an exponential rate. I hope this was useful. Make sure to check out my other videos on my page because those are all free. It's a free education, you guys. So do me a favor and subscribe if you want more. On my Patreon, I have my shot list, storyboards, everything else that I'm going to be posting on the new documentaries that I'm shooting. I'm posting my entire production books on there so you can see what it takes to go and shoot a documentary like this. Kind of a more behind the scenes of how I do things day to day. All right, thanks so much for watching. And as always, go film something and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.